I don't know if I'm going to get any smarter. Kind of, I've kind of peaked. I've hit my limit. Hello, everybody. Shout outs. Hello, Malek. Always oh, sorry, that's Arij. Hello, Arij. How are you? Edgar, hello. MD, Alex, hello. Uh, Long, hello, Long. Never, don't remember seeing you in there before. Noilson, hello. Shaima, hello. Lale, Lale, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Clinir, hello. The new, the old, we're all here. Amazing. I got a purple background. Look at that. You can see I'm pretty tired today. I got my coffee, but it's not working. If you guys have any recommendations for me, I'm open to suggestions, but I'm going to try to stay with you. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, Bisma, hello, Bisma, how are you doing? Gertrudis is back, hello, Gertrudis. It's going to be a great day. It's Thursday over in Vancouver. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm dying over here, as you can see, but that's cool. I'll make it. We'll be alive. Hello to the Paraná students. Paraná, my Brazilian students. I'm so happy to have you here today. We're learning the English together, but I'm very tired, but it's okay, no problem, everything okay. How, do, how was that? How was my Portuguese accent? I've been working on it. I, I feel like I should probably just move to Brazil, maybe hang out on the beach. Yeah, oh, oh Kareem likes my accent, great. I got other ones. I got, I, got, uh, I got some Japanese accents, but unfortunately there's no... And, and Alex, you know my Venezuelan accent, it's, it's not there. I can't do Spanish. But I can definitely do the Portuguese, I can do the Japanese. Do you guys do any accents? I'd, I'd love to send me some accents. Post some videos, that would be amazing. Do some accents. All right, so let's, uh, let's get into the real topic today. It's not Portuguese accent, I'm sorry. I do drink a lot of coffee, Malek, but you know, coffee is, is like liquid sunshine. If you could catch the sun and put it somewhere, where would you put it? I would put it in here. I feel like this is my liquid sunshine. So whenever I'm feeling down, you need that little pick-me-up, you know, that little boost of energy. I drink a coffee, and life is usually pretty good. But last night, <sighs> coffee won't fix last night. Now, that's, that's the truth. So, so the real lesson today is take care of your body. Don't abuse your body, um, and then life will be okay. And then you won't need coffee. Then you won't drink coffee, and it won't not work. You know what I mean? That's the lesson of today. Hello, Gaurav. How are you? All right, everybody. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into this wonderful magic over here like Harry Potter that's not it let's hold on let's go over here let's go to smart and let's see what we're gonna be working on in the smart class today so oh wait I have a question of the day I like to start with a question of the day and some of you might be interested in this topic some of you might not I hope you are I hope you are so because that's that's what we're gonna be working on today are you interested in sports and if yes, why are you interested in sports? Maybe give us some uh, ideas what kind of sports you love and why. Tell us why you love these sports. Hello, Shaima. How are you? Good? Mm hmm. All right. So, anyways, this is a question of the day, and we're going to talk about sports. So, please tell me about some sports. Let's look at some sports on the internet we have, of course. Oh, we have that controversial football, right? The one that you don't really play with your foot. So this is the football that everybody, all of you guys probably know and understand. And this is the football that I kind of, we say, American football or Canadian football. Hello, Judith. How are you? Um, so we're going to be talking about sports today. So tell us, do you play any sports? What sports do you play? Why do you play them? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And if you hate sports, tell us why you don't like sports. That's okay. There's a lot of people at my work who don't like sports. And, we, and they call it the sports, or hey, uh, go sports, right? They don't, get, they don't really care, but some people care. I care. My, my hockey team is in the playoffs right now. It's an, important, it's an important year for us. So let's talk about it. Let's talk a little bit about sports, what you play, and why. All right, so please come on in and uh, throw some information into the chat. Tell us what you like. Here we go. Boxing, awesome, great sport. Who doesn't love boxing? Great sport right there. There's the king, right? That's uh, Mayweather. He was the king for a long, long time. Boxing, good sport. And today we're also going to talk about vocabulary that you use to talk about sports. Punches, right? Uh, dodging, when you dodge a punch. Muhammad Ali probably was the greatest of all time. Yeah, I think I agree with you. So there you go. Very nice. A little bit of boxing to talk about. What else? What are some other sports you guys play? My Brazilians, please tell us, what kind of sports do you have in Brazil? I know what kind of sports you have, but please explain to me. Maybe there's a few. There's some cultural ones, right, that are only in Brazil. Chillaxing. Kareem, that's not a sport, bro. 
get get yourself some sport. Well, I don't know. I guess if you're really good at chillaxing, that could be a sport. But all right, chillaxing. Kareem is the king. Challenge him if you dare at chillaxing. Edgar says volleyball and probably beach volleyball, right? Edgar, are you from Brazil? If you're from Brazil, I'm imagining you're playing beach volleyball, which is the best kind of volleyball, right? I, I think so, anyways. Volleyball, because I feel better when I play. Exactly, good one. Cricket, all right, there's cool. That's a new one, I've never tried cricket before. That's interesting. Areej says, I like swimming, but I'm not a good swimmer. Bad combination, Areej. Don't, don't die out there, okay? Just stay in the shallow area, right? Don't go into the deep area. We don't, we, if you can't swim very well, stay in the shallow area. That's the rule. MD says, I'm interested in sports. I like sports because I get much pleasure by playing sports, including cricket and soccer. Awesome. Yeah, good. It keeps you active, keeps you physically fit. And maybe you've heard this before, in good shape. Uh, Venetia says, I like soccer. My favorite team is the best of America, Grameal. Gremio, Gremio, Gremio. Okay, there we go. There you go. So if you didn't know, that's the best in America. There we go. Uh, what else we got? Lolly says, I'm not interested in sports. I'm too lazy. Well, Lolly, that's okay. You can, you can join Kareem in chillaxing. It's the newest sport. It's the coolest, and you don't have to do anything. Um, Bisma, I'm not a sporty person at all. No. <laughs> this is going to be a tough class. But we'll try to make it useful, and we'll try to talk about other actions we do, not just sports actions but movement actions as well. We'll keep it, keep it interesting for everybody, hopefully, this way. Mario says she loves swimming. Great, good, good exercise. Edgar, yes, from Brazil. I, I know a Brazilian. When I can see the name, I'm like, oh, it's got to be a Brazilian. From Brazil, but I'm living in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, cool. So I'm up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Very nice. Gertrudis, I, every day, I, every day I, I go jogging. Or, or I jog, you can also say that. So I go jogging and swimming from time to time. Cool, very nice. Hockey, thank you, brother, thank you. Sweet. Uh, Alex says she likes volleyball and football, also cool sports. I think sports are fun to play, right? If you're just sitting around, some people don't like watching sports, like maybe, maybe Kareem doesn't like watching sports, but he, he loves playing sports, which is totally cool. I get that, it's more fun. Like you might not want to sit there and watch some dude run around. You would rather run around yourself. That makes perfect sense. Clonera says, it's not that I don't like sports, but I'm not doing anything in these days. Clonera, T-H-E-S-E, -E, these days. Well, it's never too late. You can always join a club. I don't know. Get out there. Maybe do some running. Find someone else who also needs to do something. Be like, hey, let's go running together. That could be good. Uh, Judith, hello. You're late because it was not a notice from... Oh, interesting. What's going on here? Oh, man, we, maybe we have a time schedule problem. So we'll have to fix that up. I will, I will get on that. Uh, scheduled time for the Parana is uh, Vancouver time is 2.30 now on Thursdays. So if, if there was a mix-up, I apologize. 2.30 on Thursdays, Vancouver time. And I think in most places in Brazil, that's going to be 5.30, I think. 5.30 or 6.30, depending on where you are, maybe. So I apologize for that, Judith. Uh, it will, from now on, it will be 2.30 on Thursday's Vancouver time. Uh, Shaima says, I love wrestling. Oh, that's interesting. Shaima, you're a wrestler? That's cool. Not a lot of people do that. And let, let's take a look at some wrestling pictures, maybe some old school wrestling pictures. Because there's two kinds of wrestling, right? There's, there's the old wrestling. There's this kind of wrestling, which is like the American kind of wrestling. Well, I guess they're all American kind of wrestlings, aren't they? Where these two men grapple with each other, wonderful. And then we got this kind of wrestling. You know, this kind, right? The fake one. So are we talking, I'm guessing you're talking about real wrestling, not this fake, not the fake wrestling. Uh, but yeah, I used to be a big fan of uh, WWE when I was a kid. There was some classic stuff there. Uh, Dia says, walking is a great sport. It suits everyone, that's true. Scuba diving, that is cool, Gertrudas. I would love to try scuba diving someday. Um, let's see here. Uh, Malek, I'm an athlete. And Malek, what kind of athlete are you? Give us a little more information on that. Ziad says they like soccer, but I'm uh, practicing it virtually through video games instead of playing it on the pitch. That's cool, you know, Ziad, because remember, in the future, we're going to have virtual reality and, and sports. Nobody will play sports in the real world anymore. They all play it in virtual reality. It'll be crazy, and it's going to be so out of control. It's going to be cool. Just wait for it. 
Uh, Alex likes a bit of everything. Cool, yeah, try everything. You dabble, and there's a new word for you. You dabble, you try it a little bit. You dabble in sports, you dabble in this, you dabble in that. Uh, <laughs> see, it says WWE. Yes, there we go. I don't know who this guy is, some WWE, but if you look at this, WWE is that fake wrestling that, that people watch, especially in the States. They love their wrestling. All these guys are like kind of actors, right? So it's like a fake wrestling that people do. But uh, very entertaining. Some people like that as well. So that's cool. Very nice. So what we're going to do, I think we'll, we'll look at a few types of sports. Uh, we'll get into some discussion about it as well. And then we'll try to talk about, we'll try to look at some photos and we'll try to pick out all the actions which are happening in sports because those are, those are going to be the useful things. Uh, especially just talking about verbs and stuff like that. And that's kind of our lesson for later as well, verbs. So let's jump in and let's get into some discussion so you guys can start throwing in your answers into the chat. And let's start with that. So, let's, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to our smart page here. Where are you smart? Let's see here. So if you have this, please log in and we're going to go to smartenglish.com and we're going to go to our library where we keep our books. English 120. The connection's bad. Aye, 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 aye. And we're going to scroll down to unit number five, six. And we're going to talk about some sports. So let's scroll down there. Go sports. All right, so let's jump into the 6-2, the vocab discussion. This is what we're going to work on. And let's start with a few questions for you guys. And this is a good first question, so let's bring that a little bit bigger. Are you a competitive person? And if you don't know what competitive means, it means a person who likes to work, you know, who, let's say you're playing a game, you want to win the game. You, you are a competitive person. So if two people are playing a video game, you want to win the video game. You are competitive. Two people are playing sports, you want to win. So whenever, whenever you're doing something with other people, you're trying to win. You're a competitive person. Does that make sense? So, uh, Ruben, we're talking about sports today, and the question we're going to work on right now is, are you a competitive person? So, guys, please tell me uh, what you think about that. I will give you that link as well, Judith. So, this is, if you have smart, you will be able to open this link, I believe. But uh, don't worry, anything that we talk about, any vocab that we learn today, I'm going to be putting it on this document here and sharing it with you as well. Okay, so don't worry about that. Everything, I will make a copy of it and put it in there and make, it, make sure that you guys can have a copy of everything. Oh, no, Lolly, I'm so sorry. We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna try to make it easier. We're going to talk about actions as well. So it's going to be useful in English as well. I know. Sometimes we have to talk. You know, some guys like to talk about sports. I don't mind it, but I, but I know people in my workplace, when the sports talk comes on, they're like, oh, no. And, but, you know, we've got to talk about it. Let me tell you a little bit of secret. You know, maybe for some guys, Sports are like soap operas for guys, right? It's the, it's the drama that we talk about. So, that's, so maybe that'll help you to understand it. Some guys like to talk about sports. So we, we do it in that kind of way. It's almost like a soap opera for us. It's the romance of it all. It's our equivalent of romance. So there you go. It's a little secret from the world of men to you. All right, so let's get to this question here. Are you a competitive person, which is the one we're starting with here? Uh, give me your answers on that. Uh, so, MD says, I'm a competitive person. I always want to win in any competition, okay? And what are some, wo what are some words that you could use uh, for sports? Winning, what's another way to say win a competition? Uh, so, if you use, it's uh, a new word for you, dominate. So, dominate is a verb, and it, the meaning is to win. So, a word is dominate and the meaning is to win to win by a large amount uh, he dominated the competition she dominated the competition meaning the other people they didn't have a chance to win dominate is a word you could use if you if you win really well that's another one we could use what else you guys got here uh, oh, Edgar, okay. So, so, so like I said, guys, I understand sometimes you won't. Sometimes you won't have the ability. If you don't have the, uh, the smart, if you don't have your own uh, subscription to smart, you will just have to follow uh, what I'm doing here. But everything we talk about today, every new word that's useful, I'm going to put it into a document and I'll share that with you after. So that at the end of class, or better yet, let me share that with you now so you guys can follow what we're working on. So let me throw that in here. There you go. 
Okay, so please take a take a look at that document. You can open that document and you'll be able to watch the document and see what kind of information we're putting on it as we do the lesson. All right, so let's go back here. What do we got here for some more answers? What did you guys say here? Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Sports. Uh, okay, do, 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 do. Competitive, not a competitive person. So Ziad says, I get really upset when I lose a game. 90% of the game I play ends with yelling and shouting. Okay, yeah, that there you go. So very competitive person. Uh, so what would you say? So a very competitive person gets all in. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a new one. And again, like I said, some of these things we can use to talk about sports, but some of these things we can also use just to talk about everyday life. So I'm going to try to keep it practical, not only about sports. Uh, take things seriously. So this is a, this is a kind of a collocation, I guess, a combination of words that we use. And if you take things seriously, so for example, you take sports seriously, or you take, um, I don't know, exercise seriously, uh, it basically means that you are very serious. You, you know, you, you don't, you, it's not, it's a very important situation for you. So the meaning, take things seriously, is to um, what you do is very important to you. Alright, so there we go. So there's another way. Uh, take things seriously. It's a good collocation you can use as well. So Zia takes things seriously, especially when he plays sports. Uh, Gada says, some, someone, some, so some people disagree with me, but I think all people are competitive. Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of people have this competitive nature, right? Like everybody wants to win. I certainly, I get competitive. I'll be honest, I get competitive with everything, like even video games and stuff. It just... I try to calm it down, but you know the child, the child comes out, especially when you're playing video games. I don't know why. And sports and other sports as well. You get competitive. Uh, Dia says, yes, I'm a competitive person. I do my best when there is an opponent to face. Nice one right there, Dia. You face an opponent. And this is not only for sports. So like I said, we're going to try to, we're going to try to connect this to the real world as well. You face a problem and you face an opponent. And what does face mean? Maybe you guys know this word confront, right? You, you face. You face a problem. You face a challenge in your life. You face an opponent, the, the person on the other team, right? Or the person on the other side. JB's in the class. Thanks, JB. JB's going to help me out with anything that, that we forget about. He's like, he's like a personal assistant. He's great. Uh, JB, you jump in any time, all right, buddy? We're, 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 we'll wait for you. All right, so you face an opponent, you face a problem, uh, which means confront confront uh, an, a, a, confront something. So if you don't know confront, you might have to Google that one. That one's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's like similar to do, uh, but in a, a difficult situation. Uh, Clanira, I think I can describe myself as a competitive person, but it's more with myself, my own self, so with myself, to overcome my difficulties. Very nice, Clanira, you got it. Overcome, good word. A verb you can use. And again, same thing. You overcome a problem. You overcome a difficult situation. It means you kind of succeed in. You almost like a pass, but we don't say pass. We say overcome. Uh, so I can almost use the same thing to face a problem, a difficult thing, and succeed. Okay, very nice. Cool. What else we got here? Uh, Bisma. She, she has been a competitive person all her life, and now she has finally won the championship trophy. Yes, that would work. So again, using competitive in a sentence, that's perfect, Bisma, you got it. Edgar, I'm very competitive when I play chess. All right, a very intellectual game. Uh, and in chess, you have to be very strategic. Here's a new word what we can use, strategic. Uh, so what is strategic? Strategy, right? You know this word strategy. So you have to think very carefully like, oh, I have to go here first because if he goes here, I got to go there or there or there. So strategy. So strategic. So you have to be strategic means you have to um, create a plan to win. That's usually to win, right? To succeed. All right, very nice. Uh, let's go here, da, da, da. passionate about something, yes, very nice, JB, thank you for the extra vocab. I think everyone is passionate 
about something, correct. Let's add that. Be passionate about something. So this would be a collocation, a combination of words that we often use. Why does Eric do that? Be passionate. Be very, uh, let's just say be very interested in something. It's just another way to say it. I am interested in sports. But if you say I'm passionate about sports, it means it's more. It's much, much stronger, right? So I am passionate about. What are you passionate about? These are some good things. So keep these. Keep these in your pocket, and we can use them for later because these are some good, good, uh, good combinations of vocab and some good, good verbs, what we're using here, that you can definitely use in sports and out of sports. So we're not only talking about sports today. What else we got here? Uh, cool. Come up with, come from something, make an effort. Uh, oh, Gertruda says, I prefer to catch my goals, but I take things very seriously. Just add that L-Y. Uh, good. And you take your study seriously, Lolly. Very nice. You should do that. That's a good, that's a good answer. Let's jump to another question. And again, like I said, we're going to keep it, we're going to keep it general because I know not everybody is interested in sports. So we're going to talk about sports, but also language that we can use to talk about everyday life as well. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's go over here. This one. This is not necessarily about sports, so let's use this one as our as our speaking point here. So, what do you wish you were talented at? Uh, good at. I wish I was good at. Um, I wish I was good at math. I'm horrible at math. I'm just not that guy. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm more of a creative guy, I think. Uh, so, I'm not talented at math. I wish I was better at math. I wish I was talented at math. What do you wish you were talented at? Please give us an answer and use that in your answer. I wish I was talented at, because that's imagination now. We're talking about now or in the future, right? So what would, you, what would you say about that? What is something you wish you were talented at, you had good skills, good ability at, that you could do very well? Give us a few answers. For me, it's definitely math, and uh, that's not a skill of mine. What else would I like to be talented at? I guess I'd like to be more talented at business. Business would be nice, right? Because business is something you could do for yourself. You could start your own business, and you could, you know, uh, I don't know, you're self-employed, right? If you have been self-employed, that's pretty awesome. So what do you guys think? What is something you would like to be talented at? Let me go back here. Art. Oli says, I wish I was talented at art. Yeah, and why? Tell us, tell us why you wish you were talented at. Uh, talented at dancing. I wish I was good at dancing. And again, guys, just one thing. Remember, after you at is a preposition, so after the preposition, you'll have to use uh, ing verb. Just a little thing there. Talented at dancing. Talented at um, doing art. Something like that. Uh, Quinera, good at dancing. Okay, everybody. A lot of people need help with dancing. I'm sure some people are good. I'm sure, I'm sure the South Americans are good at dancing, right? It's got to be the way. Canadians, we're not good dancers. We got some weird, some weird like old school dances going on. They're just goofy. Uh, Dia says, I'm a go-getter. Ooh, that's a nice one. I like that. Let's add that one to the list. Uh, be a go we'll call it be a go-getter. Uh, so if you say I'm a go-getter, it means you... You are a person who doesn't wait. You, you are ambitious and proactive. I think that's pretty good. So ambitious and proactive. So it means you, you don't wait for something. You just go and you get it. Make sense? Uh, go getter. Very nice one. Good word. OK. Next one. What else we got here? <laughs> Dia's hitting us with all kinds of idiom. Yeah. All right, thank you, Dia. Throw in the towel. That's a good one as well. What does it mean? Okay, so be a go-getter is, I guess it's a collocation. No, I guess it's an idiom. Okay, call it an idiom. Throw in the towel is also an idiom. And it means give up. Quit. Like, you know, when you're done, you're just, oh, I give up. I throw in, throw in the towel. So it's like a boxing. It's a boxing thing, right? So when you're boxing and somebody, maybe this guy's getting beat up, he's getting attacked a lot, and his coach says, man, he's done, you throw in the towel and the fight is finished. So you throw in the towel means give up or quit. Very nice, Dia. Uh, ooh, bookworm, very nice. Uh, okay, so I wish, so Mariam, I think I wish I was, I wish I was a bookworm. Manera, you are late, but that's okay. We videotaped the whole thing, so you're going to be all right. Uh, Ziad, I wish I was good at hacking video games. Interesting choice, because whenever I play Fortnite, I come across tens, 
tens of hackers, tens of, usually we say tens of thousands or tens of something, uh, but you, you come across hackers. This, this must be a video game that I don't understand. I, right now I'm playing, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Ziad. It's a little bit of an old game, I know, but I'm in running around Havana and I'm assassinating people. It's pretty awesome, but maybe I'm gonna have to try that video game after I'm done my Assassin's Creed. Hannah, I wish I was talented at facing problems calmly. Very nice. Just delete that E on your calmly, Hannah. Very nice, Hannah nice. Uh, got up. I wish I was talented at. And again, don't careful, don't use the with. Make sure to use at. I wish I was talented at writing essay. Talented with, is it wrong? Talent, I'm talented with. Maybe not quite. Maybe at sounds a little bit better. Um, yeah, just a weird, weird little thing. Just at, not with. Uh, all right, very nice. Talented at playing guitar, very nice. Uh, Amina says, I'm, I am talented. And again, use that, try to use everything. I am, tal I am talented at being a model or a fashion model. All of that would be good as well. Alexandra says, I wish I was talented at cooking, but feel no shame for that. Okay, cool. Yeah, why not? I don't, I'm not very good at cooking. I got like one or two things that I can cook pretty well, but not, not too many after that. Judith says, I wish I was talented in music. Okay, and you changed, that's okay. Talented in music is, is possible. Uh, at music, also okay. But I was good in math and physics. That, that is the reason why I became a physics teacher. Uh, Bismuth says, I wish I, I wish I was, I wish I were. Yes, you can also use were as well, you're right. Talented at technology so that I might make my life uh, easier and more impressive, maybe, something like that. All right, very nice. Let's go on, we're gonna go to one more before I think, and then we're gonna jump into a bit of grammar stuff, uh, but let's do one more question of vocab on, uh, on sports here. Mm -hmm. No, I'm gonna skip that, let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. Rumors, rumors about people. Sure, why not, gossip. What's the connection with this and sports? Sports rumors, maybe? Okay, let's see. Maybe we'll use that one. Uh, complete. What is it going to send you on the case? Cycle often. Hmm. Let's talk about this one. Uh, because this is this kind of connects to some things that we can talk about as well. So the question here is which sports require the most movement. No, let's skip that one. I don't want to bore anybody with sports talk if, they can, if we can do both, you know what I mean? Let's do this. Let's talk about gossip because we can still talk about sports and that kind of stuff. Remember, sports is sports are soap operas for men. Now you, you can let me know if you agree with my opinion on that, but I think that's a secret from the world of men to you. So don't tell anyone else that's, uh, that's a secret. Uh, but here we go. Let's go to this one here. Do you like hearing rumors about people? And you can talk about sports or just rumors in general. Uh, and there's some idioms that we can definitely pull out of here as well. So what do you guys think about this one? Do you like hearing rumors about people? We've got some people coming in. Hello, Niha. How are you? Come on in. We're recording everything, so you'll be all right. You'll get everything before. Do you like hearing about rumors about people? Maybe celebrity rumors or sports rumors or... And, and here's the thing. Here's the word we might use. Are you... What's the word I'm looking for here? Do you like to gossip? So we're going to use gossip as a verb here. Gossip. Talk about. Uh, talk about other people. Hmm. How do you? How would you explain gossip? I think I'm going to have to Google this. Get out of here, WWE. And let's go over here. I need a good explanation. Unless well, JB, JB, you want to weigh in on this? How do you? What, how would you explain gossip? Girl. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. That's what I needed. Gossip is to talk about to talk about other people, especially private information. Not public, right? Not something everybody knows. So gossip. You talk about other people, other things, but really, yeah, JB talking about the lies and activities of other people, and especially private information, right? Where you you d maybe I don't want everybody to know this information about me, but other people are like saying something like that, right? So it's kind of like private information. That's kind of the, the emphasis there, right? 
So Guravia, exactly, to talk about someone secretly as well. Good, talk behind someone's back. Talk, be talk behind someone's back, Judith, is, is, yeah, is similar, right? And it's also like, um, say something bad. Gossip, you can talk, yeah, I guess gossip is generally bad. Mm, like, but it's not necessarily so bad. Like say, oh, that guy's dating that girl, or that girl's good, you know, or whatever. You know, that person's dating that person. That would be gossip. But talking behind someone's back is like, oh, that guy's such a bad guy that can't. He's so dumb. And then you see, he, someone sees me, and they're like, oh, can you? So, oh, hey, how are you? You know what I mean? You got that whole that evil, that evilness to it. All right. So there we go. So the question is, do you guys? Do you guys like hearing rumors about people? Or maybe do you gossip? That could also be the question as well. Do you guys enjoy hearing this kind of stuff? Is it interesting for you? Or do you think, no, that's not my thing. I don't want to hear that. What do you guys, hello, hello, come on in. Uh, so what do you guys think about that? Do you like hearing rumors about people? Yes or no, what do you think? Maybe work gossip, right, or celebrity gossip. Areej says, I think gossip is a business of people who don't have any plans. I agree with you, Areej. But again, there's also, you know, of course, it's if you're talking about celebrity gossip, that makes sense, right? Because people talk about them all the time. But what do you think about maybe workplace gossip or in your school gossip or something like that? Business is being evil and always irritating people. Oh, my goodness. Mm, okay. There we go. Um, so gossipers, yeah. Yeah, all right. I understand the very between positive and negative gossip. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, Judith, you're good to go then. Uh, sometimes is enjoyable. Yeah, and I t again, tell us why. Why do you think gossip is sometimes enjoyable? Lolly says, I don't like gossip. It's a waste of time. Yeah, I agree. It can be a waste of time as well. Some gossip's not really that interesting anyways, is it? So let's put in that, that in there. It's a good collocation. A waste of time. Not important. Not important. There we go. Very nice. Uh, Gaurav says, no, I never engage myself in gossip. I keep myself aloof from gossip. Good. Nice word, aloof. So aloof you can think about as kind of uh, not, not paying attention to gossip, not, uh, not trying to understand, not trying to listen or anything like that, just kind of remaining away from stuff. Uh, what's a, I need a good definition of aloof. What is aloof? Uh, not friendly, forthcoming, cool, distance, uh, uninterested. There we go. That's an easy way to explain that. Uninterested. Aloof. So it's an adjective. You are aloof. He is aloof. She is aloof. Very nice. Uninterested. All right. Okay. Uh, Mariam says, I like, like to hear gossip. And again, gossip's this weird one. It's uh, Gossip is like information in English, so we don't say gossip, so we just say gossip, like it's uncountable. Uh, but so I don't like I like to hear gossip about celebrities, but I hate it about relatives or neighbors. Fair, fair enough, right? It's time consuming. Yes, it is time consuming, and that's a nice collocation as well. Time consuming, very nice. So time consuming wastes a lot of time, uses a lot of time. Time consuming, a time consuming job, a time consuming topic, a time consuming day, whatever. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, uh, gossiping is bad whenever and wherever. I don't like gossip because I will feel bad when I see the person. Yes, gossip verb and noun. Yeah, exactly. You're right, uh, Judith. You can use it as a verb and a noun. Um, do we have an adjective for gossip? Not really. Um, sometimes we create adjectives in English by just adding the e. So gossipy, like if I, w if I wanted to, I could create a word in English. I could say, oh, that person is really gossipy. Um, sometimes we do it just adding a y. But yeah, generally a verb and a noun, both of those are good. All right, very good. So what I think we're going to do here, we got some nice, nice vocab here, and it's not necessarily connected about sports. I think we did a good job staying in the middle there. But we're gonna, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over, and we're going to go look at a little bit of grammar that we use to talk about these things. So what we're going to do is go over here. And I'm going to jump into, not that, that's not what I want. Let's go back to the smart. Mm -hmm. go all right so we're gonna go here we're gonna go back to the library 
Can gossip be used as a gerund? Yes, it can, Gaurav. You can use it. Gossiping is a waste of time, for example, using it at the beginning of a sentence. And Gaurav, that was a perfect segue because that's actually what we're going to be talking today. We're going to be talking about gerunds, using ing verbs uh, in your grammar. And we're going to look at when you can use them, different situations. And we're going to practice making some sentences, maybe using some of the vocab that we looked at today. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the grammar section. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of this. So if you look at this one here, you can see it right up there. And you can see that the first word is watching. Watching hockey with my friends is my favorite thing to do. So this is an example of what we're going to look at today. We're going to be looking at ing verbs. And ing verbs we also call gerunds. So let's take a look at this. So if you look at this definition here, uh, gerunds are verbs. Gerunds are verbs that end in ing and function as a noun in a sentence. They are found in places where we usually use a noun. OK, so let's look at some examples of a gerund. So a gerund is a verb, and it's like a noun as well. It's kind of both. So sometimes we use them in a verb position, and sometimes we use them in a noun position. So we're going to look at both today. So if you look at this first one here, uh, you got soccer is, is, is an enjoyable activity, and watching soccer, sorry, watching soccer is an enjoyable activity. So here you can see that we're using watching at the beginning of a sentence. Smoking is bad, watching soccer is great, drinking beer is acceptable, but not in large quantities, this kind of thing. So you can use an ing verb at the, fir the first word of your sentence, and it's kind of like a noun. We use it, and it is a noun in that sentence. Uh, what's here? Judah says, gossip and bullying spelling are connecting through the social network. Gossip and bullying. So gossip and bullying, B-U-L-L-Y-I-N-G, are connecting through our, mm, our scene, our, our people experience bullying through social networks, something like that. Uh, okay, good. Manal's got an example there, playing soccer is fun. Gertrude is gossiping, G-O-S-S-I-P-Y-I-N-G, is not my cup of tea. And uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, learning English is really important these days. I totally agree with you. If you can put the pronunciation of your name, that would be great. I don't know how to do that. Learning English is my passion. Good. So you guys have done this before. You've seen this before. So that's the first position we're looking at and uh, using an I-N-G verb. The second position is this one. And this, so if we look at this one over here, watching is definitely like a noun, right? Watching, watching uh, TV is OK sometimes when on, on a rainy day. Smoking is bad. So it's like a noun. But if you look at the second one over here, uh, thinking, uh, sorry, uh, well that, no, this one here, this is the one I want to look at. He is thinking about playing sports. He is interested in playing sports. Um, they are talking about playing sports. They are keen on playing sports. So we use an ing verb here. And why do we use ing verb here? And the reason we use an ing verb is because of this word about. About, with, on, in, for. A lot of these words are prepositions. And after a preposition, we use an ing verb. So that's the second position where we often use ing verbs. So far, so good. We're following everything here, I hope. Uh, what else we got here? Anyone got some sentences here? So we got a few. Sleeping is good for your health. Yep, the noun position. Driving while being drunk may lead to <laughs> terrible consequences. I agree. Don't do it. Uh, and Gada has an, a gerund's an infinitive exam next week. So there you go, Gada. This is the perfect lesson for you just to prepare for that exam. Uh, Alexander says, watching Gossip Girl was so popular when I was young. There we go. And Dia says, some people pose as friends, uh, as friend work as spy. Mm, don't be such a naive person with this type of people. Some people pose as friends at work, but are spies, something like that. Ah, hello. Come on. Come on in. Join us. We're right in the middle here. Uh, all right, so that was the second position. So we're going we're gonna to have an opportunity to go back, and we're going to look at some of these positions later. Next one. Now here we have an ing verb as well. So here, number one, noun. Number two, verb. Number three, also a verb. And the reason that this one is also a verb is because we're talking about the present continuous, right? Uh, we, you are learning. I am talking, we are sitting, uh, everything which is happening right now 
and sometimes in the future. So her hobby is taking photos. That's a weird one because that sounds like, a, like an everyday thing. Uh, but I think the idea is the continuous is an activity which is usually happening now. So her, I am sitting, you are sitting, we are talking, we are listening. Then the ing is a verb in this situation. So that's the normal one. I think most people have seen this before, right? This is the present continuous. All right. Uh, so Lolly's got one. So I am thinking about practicing a sport one day. Good. Very nice sentence as well. And again, you know what I mean? It's those prepositions. Talk, uh, thinking about, interested in. So sometimes when you get those prepositions, you must use an ing verb. And I'm going to try to give you some documents today which will help you with that a little bit. But a lot of it is practice. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Judah says, spending too much time on Facebook and other social networks can be harmful uh, for people or to people. Both are kind of possible here who can't control their time or his or her time. Yep, yeah, that's it. That works. Eavesdropping on people is morally unacceptable. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, good word. Eavesdrop. Let's uh, add that one because that's a good word as well. So if you eavesdrop. So how do we spell eavesdropping? E-A-V-E-S. Um, eavesdrop. So I'm, I'm just going to put it in the, in the basic form. But again, you can change this to uh, a gerund with an I-N-G as well. To listen to someone else's conversation. We'll just say to listen to other conversations. OK? Uh, but they don't know. So you're kind of like secretly listening to someone's conversation. Good word. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Next one here. We have making a huge decision is always a struggle. Good. So using it at the beginning. Very nice. Bisma is using the third one. I am working hard. Uh, this is an interesting one. I am working hard for learning how to drive a car. Now the little rule is, the weird. it's a weird little rule, but if you have the option in English, you can say, for example, Bisma said, I am working hard for learning. Or you can say, I'm working hard to learn, no ing because of to. If you have the option to use those two sentences in English, always choose the to. Uh, it's just better, and it's usually the correct one. So sometimes for learning is possible, but in English, if we can say for learning or to learn, we always choose to. It just sounds, it sounds better. Uh, the grammatically, it's correct, but it sounds more natural in English. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Noor. Welcome. Come on in. Uh, Gada says, are gerunds, can they be used with present perfect items? Yes. Yes, they can. So basically, gerunds can be used, um, smoking has been, right? So I can use it at the beginning of a sentence. Or I have been thinking about stopping smoking. That's another way you could use it. So thinking about stopping. So yeah, you can use it. In, it there are certain rules which you'll need to learn about gerunds, beginning of a sentence, after a preposition, present continuous and we're going to we're going to look at a few more as well and then we're going to get you guys to make your own sentences using some of the vocab that we learned today and the grammar from today. So let's see what else we got here. Hannah says, "Why do I always forget to use what I learned on this channel at work?" I don't know, Hannah. I'm not sure. It's tough, right? You learn something and it's in your head during the class and maybe a little bit after class, but of course, you know, you go back to your normal life and all this vocabulary disappears. It's, it's a tough thing to learn another language. I always recommend reading books. Reading books are an awesome way to just keep the language coming in all the time. Not a book that's too hard, but a book that's at a good level for you. Always a good idea. Uh, Alexandra says, I'm listening to the band that I recommended. Which band did I recommend? I'm trying to remember which band I recommended. Oh, I do like music. See? See, forgetting things, forgetting language, it just happens so quickly. Well, my, my memory is like a goldfish, I'll be honest. I'm not very good at that. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, okay, good. I'm, ha I'm happy, Dia. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Clonaris is being passionate about reading. Very nice, good. So again, being at the beginning and about reading is which, uh, is what, I'm going to change that, is what makes a huge difference in her English. JB, that's some truth. Eating is one of the joys of life. Eating is great. Love eating. Don't want to stop. Um, uh, Alexandra says, oh, yeah. Did I recommend those guys to you? Oh, my God. I can't believe I did. I'm glad you like them because they're, they're kind of, they're really good. They're really talented. 
Uh, this is definitely not for everyone. This is only for me and Alexandra listening to this band, but I'm glad you like it. They're really interesting, and they're coming. They're actually coming to Canada pretty soon, so I, I'm pretty excited about that. Pretty pumped about that. Alex is back. Welcome back, Alex. Uh, Gertrudis, uh, <laughs> your keyboard is crazy. Okay, no worries. All right, so this is what we're going to look at. Let's keep going because we were, we're kind of halfway there. Next. So here's another position we might use an ing verb. Uh, and why is that one different from that one? My hobby is her hobby is taking photos. Why is that one an ing and that one not? Her, hobby, her habit is annoying. Yeah, it's present continuous, present continuous. Her biting. Oh, okay. Her nails is annoying. Uh, yeah, anyways, this is where you guys can start to hate English. But sometimes, sometimes in English we don't have uh, a regular noun. So we use an ing verb. We use an ing verb, which is like a noun, to create a new one. Because um, we need to show an action, right? So her biting her nails. If you say her bite her nails, it sounds weird. Sometimes this doesn't happen very often. I'll be honest with you. Number four, it doesn't happen very often that we use this, but it's correct. Her biting her nails is annoying, which means when she bites her nails, it's annoying. I wouldn't worry too much about that one. That one doesn't happen very often. Okay? And the other thing is, how do you do it in the negative? So again, it depends. Depends on the situation. So she asked about not, she asked about paying tax, or she asked about not paying tax. So you just put the not before the gerund. Same thing at the beginning. Sleeping every night is uh, healthy. Not sleeping every night is unhealthy. Okay, so far so good. Anyone lost? I hope nobody's lost out there. We're gonna we're gonna try to make this. Uh, Ollie's got one. Biting her nails is annoying. What's yeah? I what, what, what can I say? That's that's a that's a difficult sentence. Oh, okay. You want to use it in the other way. Biting her nails. Biting her nails by her is biting her nails is annoying. So the problem with that sentence is we need to make it about the person. So we say her biting her nails is annoying, which is weird. Um, or make a longer sentence, which is easier. When she bites her nails, it is annoying. That would be the easiest way and the simple, uh, a lot, something that you know how to use already. So this is not necessary. This is kind of a, a level of English that you kind of learn naturally. So I wouldn't, I would never teach you that really. I would never spend a long time teaching that. So I would say when she bites her nails, it is annoying. That's what I would say. JB, you're on it, dude. You read my mind already. Guys, div divert all your questions to JB. I'm just going to do the talking here. I'm going to be the, the show, but JB will answer all your hard questions. He seems to have a handle on it all, so that's cool. Thanks, JB. Uh, Edgar says, I always enjoy working for myself, but sometimes I feel it is difficult to make money. Good. Nice, Edgar. Just add the it, and you're good to go. Uh, Alex, yes, I saw you. <laughs> She's sad if I don't say hi to her. Hello, Alex. Welcome back. Oh, finally you came back. Great. Alex is back. Hmm? Uh, Gertrudis, biting, what? Biting bite. Biting bite. Yes, same idea. Same, same verb. Biting is bite. Uh, Bisma, she couldn't even care less about paying tax on time. About paying tax on time. Yes, that works. I am not getting her biting her nails. Sorry, biting. Um, don't worry, we're up. Like I said, this, this grammar, this grammar that they had up there, this ne we never speak, we don't really speak this way very often. It's just something that you should see, and that's what it means, but you don't have to focus on it. It won't, that grammar will not change your life, I promise. Um, oh, very nice. Trump's tweeting. Good example, JB, of using, a, using another noun. When we, we need to create a noun, like for example, tweet, Twitter, it's a new word, right? We don't really have any normal word. Uh, we could use another word like Trump's remarks. That would be another word which sounds like tweeting. But we want to talk about using Twitter, so, so we use the ing verb like JB did, tweeting, which would work as well. So sometimes you can actually create a noun just using ing verbs. Okay, so very nice. Let's go ahead here. So we've done this, we've done that. Uh, so here, this is what we can focus on today. Uh, now let me go through. Let's see. I got all the questions from you guys. Okay, so Zia's using it in a negative here. Not paying attention to the details might make you make the wrong decision or decisions. Sometimes both are okay. 
uh, Noor says, I enjoy taking a class rather than going outside. Also good. Alexandra, not talking about the problem leads to aggravating the problem. Now that's a weird one, Alexandra. Sometimes, only sometimes, after to, we use an ing verb. Most of the time it's infinitive, to go, to buy, to listen to. Look forward to going, and yours was leads to aggravating. Only in a few situations we use to and then an ing verb. Most of the time it's just an infinitive. Alex is good, great. Uh, Dia, stopping, yes. Uh, Judith, her constant lying is hurt very much because nobody can't handle. Uh, her constant lying is good. Constant lying is hurt very much. Mm, not sure, just maybe that sentence a little bit. Her constant lying hurts people, maybe, Judith, uh, because nobody can handle it or something like that. Uh, Gara says, I like studying at university more than studying at home. Perfect. Dia, stop eating junk food. Stop. Stop eating junk food because it is not healthy, maybe. Uh, let's see here. How long does this, <laughs> how long does, I'm reading this. How long does this live lesson take, everybody? It's about an hour. Uh, we're, we're, we're kind of on, we've got a few minutes left. We're going to go finish up a few sentences. I'm going to get you guys to create a few more uh, just for some practice, maybe using the vocab that we did today. But this was the grammar that we're kind of talking about. We'll finish this up. Uh, JB's got one here. Oh, hi, Elias. Uh-oh, I hope this wasn't the, some schedule mix-up <laughs> joining us late here. Uh, JB's got one. This cloth is for cleaning the table. Yeah, that's an interesting one, JB, because you use just the cloth is and then your preposition for cleaning. And that's a, also a possible one as well. Uh, this book is by. No, but we wouldn't use by. This, this cloth is for cleaning the table. This book is about learning English. So we could use the be verb and then a preposition as well sometimes. And that makes sense. Uh, Dia, not stopping eating junk food is dangerous. Yes, I think your grammar is good there. Not stopping eating. Not stopping eating. Yeah, you're right. It's, it sounds, it's a little weird because it's ing, ing, but it's correct. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And let's see, not being, not being able to drink coffee can destroy my day. Clinera, you read my mind, exactly. Not being able to drink coffee can destroy anyone's day. You know, coffee is a good pick-me-up. There's, there's a good one, let me, let me put that on there. That's a good one. A pick-me-up. And a pick-me-up means something which gives you energy. Coffee is a pick-me-up, a great pick-me-up. All right, very nice. Uh, let's see, let's go back here. How are we doing here? Okay, ah, okay, there we go, yeah, okay. So that's where you got it from, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, good, good. What else we got here? Uh, so, Munir is asking a good book for reading. Hmm, Munir, I'd, that's a difficult question because I don't know what you like to read. But I would say, uh, if you're looking to improve your English, just overall, you want to get better at English, I would choose a book which is not too difficult and not too easy, just somewhere right in the middle, and most importantly, a book that you enjoy. If you enjoy reading, your English will improve so much more. Um, so try to find your genre, what kind of books you like. You want to get a book that you're really going to enjoy, and I, I think your, your English is guaranteed it's going to improve if you start reading and you enjoy your books because then you'll really you'll take control of your learning a lot more uh, so yeah that's my advice on, on reading uh, so next sentence speaking english has become common in most countries in the world awesome sentence uh, okay that's right yeah okay Z jb is good there being able to look at your face makes it all <laughs> worthwhile uh, yeah sure Ziad, I'm flattered. I'm flattered you enjoy my face so much. I'm sure you weren't talking about me about that, but I'm going to pretend you were. Uh, Goddess says, sleeping early is what I have to do. But it's almost 2 a.m. Wait, that's, that's a good sentence. There you go. And that's some truth as well, right? Uh, talking, taking, taking, T-A-K-I-N-G, taking, taking, taking uh, an internet class is easier to save a lot of time. That's also true. Uh, Hannah, I think the word being is difficult to use correctly in English. Yeah, 
it's it's a tricky one um, because B is it's it's like a fact, right? You are a student, I am a teacher. It is rainy, um, and we are at home, or whatever, right? Um, it's a hard word to get a handle on. I guess the other thing you can do is, I like to teach this, teach the rules, right? So you can use the be verb with prepositions. Uh, I am in Canada. You can use it with nouns. I am a teacher. Uh, or you can use it with adjectives. I am happy. So all of, or a happy teacher. So if you use those three rules, you know that, oh, I can always use my be verb with those three things anytime in English, and you should be safe. But uh, so it's like a fact, right? You are a student. It's kind of a fact. Well, it is a fact in your mind, right? So it's like for facts, you use the be verb. Uh, where else are we at here? Uh, do, 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 do. Judith, being passionate about learning new things. Very nice. Again, about learning, ing, good. Uh, being passionate about learning new things keeps you alive. So that whole part was your subject. Being passionate about learning new things subject and then verb keeps you alive every day so we'll use keeps not keeping because it's a present simple idea oh yes this equipment is for furnishing the new flat very nice lolly lolly i am not interested in books about retiring have you ever read a retirement book before it doesn't sound very exciting but could be useful but yeah i agree with you i probably not either uh being nice Hannah said being nice is wonderful, and that's true. And JB seems to agree with that. Being nice is wonderful. It's so much better when you talk to people who are friendly and smiley all the time. It just improves everyone's day. So be friendly and smiley. That's the real lesson of today. Um, Bisma, I'm very poor at writing. Don't worry, Bisma. You seem to have a great attitude, and you will get better at writing. That's cool. Um, Alex as well. Keep at it. Uh, Ilyas, you'll be wealthy sooner. Don't. Okay, this is not about grammar at all. Uh, JB says, I was being lazy yesterday. Being polite earns you respect. I think so. All right. I think if you're polite with people, they respect you more because you're making everybody's life better. Again, the lesson. Uh, all right, very nice. And let's do a few more. Clunera says, I can't help eating chocolate every now and again. That's okay. I think you're allowed to do that. And Dia says, being an engineer, I have to learn more and more English. It makes my work easier. You're welcome. You're welcome, Dia. I'm here. I'm here for you. I drank my coffee and I came here. Staying strong. All right. Very nice, guys. So I think we got it. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything else here that we didn't get through. There is a little bit more. So let's finish this lesson. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll keep it going a little bit more. I don't know if I'll be here for two hours like Kareem. He's a wild man. But, but let's finish this off here. So let's look at here. So we, we got one more position where we use these things. That's a hockey guy. Get away from me, hockey guy. Let's go. Not right now. Later. Uh, where did it go? Yeah. Objects. Yes. This one. All right. So just as we said, smoking is bad. Exercise, exercising is good. So we have the subject position, and we can also use it in the object position. So this is a noun, and this is a noun. If you say smoking is bad, smoking is a noun. And if you say I love smoking, smoking is, an, is a noun, and it's, but it's called the subject here, and it's called the object here. Okay, so we can do the same, same thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, interesting, you know what? Sorry, let me backtrack that. In this situation, Objects of verbs are usually nouns, and so gerunds are possible. Now, for me, I don't. I wouldn't call. I know they're explaining this, but I, I don't. When I look at this sentence, I don't think, oh, it's a noun. I think it's a verb, because it sounds like I love to be in this country. Now, to be is your to and your infinitive, but you can switch it sometimes. Like if love, you can use both, and usually they're they're basically the same. But you can also say, I love being in this country, which sounds similar, I love to be in this country. So for me, I wouldn't say that this is a noun. Hmm, interesting. Or is it? Yeah, that's, but if, interesting. Like here, maybe it, hopefully, maybe it doesn't matter how you explain it. I love being in this country. So for me, if I look at this one, I say, I love to be in this country. To be is a verb. I love being in this country. Being is a verb. I agree. I agree with that. And here, they started the competition or they started competing. 
I don't know. I, th I still think this one, no, I disagree. I think this is a verb. But whatever, whatever you think, uh, however this helps you to memorize these rules, you can do whatever you want. But for me, I would call this a verb. Uh, if you said they started the competition, the competition is a noun, but they started competing to me, that's, that sounds like a verb to me. So those, that's another position you can use it, whether it's you want to think of it as a noun or a verb, uh, both are correct. So let's see if you guys got some sentences about that. Uh, so, Ollie says, I love playing The Witcher. I don't know what that is, Ollie, but okay. The Witcher is cool. JB says, I hate reading in this room. JB, I know your problem. I know what's going on, buddy. But uh, maybe you'll get a new room someday. Maybe start searching for a new place. I know, I know, I know. It's tough. Uh, Ilya says, I'm not quite a nut. I'm quite not familiar. I'm not quite familiar with using the form of being in my sentences. Okay. Okay, so being is a be verb. I, so we, again, similar, similar to before. You are a student, I am a teacher, I am in Canada, you are in your country, are, is, are, same, right? It's like, uh, it's like a fact. I am sitting, it's kind of, sorry, don't use a be verb. Uh, I am happy, it's like a fact. You are in your country, it's a fact. So we use a be verb for like facts. And so if you use it here, so what they're saying is, I love to be in this country. So the first verb is love, and then the second part is a fact, is I love to be in this country. So we just use a different verb before the be. I love to be here. I love to be uh, happy. I love to be sad. No, that's weird. I love to be uh, in Brazil. So there you go. So we use it as a fact, whether it's the beginning, whether it's the first verb, or the second verb, or whatever, or the beginning of a sentence. Uh, being in being at home is always great so even the being it's still like a it's still a fact hopefully hopefully that answered that question there all right so where are we at here uh, Gaurav says I love playing cricket yeah that works as well Dia says being an overweight adult I should stop eating junk food God have mercy on me <laughs> laugh out loud very nice I'm glad you can laugh good uh, familiar with okay uh, what else we got here uh, let's go back up. Alex, what, what did I miss, Alex? Uh, something's going on. Why, why not what? What did I, we missed something here. Uh, good. I'm glad, Alex. I'm glad you love learning in this class. That is correct. I think you're asking me if that's correct or if that's a little face. I don't know what that is. I'm not too savvy with my faces there. But yes, that's good. All right, so this was the other position. Now, before we finish today, I'm going to give you this big crazy list and I'm going to put it in the document here. And this is a list of verbs. This is a list of verbs which we use um, gerunds after. OK, so I'm going to share this with you again just so you have it. So this is just verbs. So please take a look at that. So again, all the stuff that we've learned today in terms of vocabulary and that list are in that document. So if you look at this document here, you can see that here I'm focusing on verbs. Uh, doctors advise. So you can see this is the verb here. And after this verb, we use an ing verb. And allow smoking. Anticipate getting. So you can see that after all of these, we use ing verbs. OK, so there's a big list. You will have to study this a little bit. Uh, but the more, you know, obviously, the more you have exposure to English, the more you learn you will get better at this and some of this will become a little bit more natural. Okay, so please take a look at this list. This is your homework for this week. Uh, take a look at it and see how many verbs in English actually use uh, gerund after. All right, despise waking up early, discuss working, dislike being, don't mind going, dread meeting, right? All of those. Uh, so what do we got here? Uh, Alex says, is it correct in a sentence? What is it? Hit? I love learning in this class is correct in a sentence, Alex. You got it. Yeah. And again, because love, you can say love to learn. That's good. And you can also say love learning. Both of them are correct. Some verbs, you can, you can decide which one you want to use. Alexander said they continued. OK, so you got it right there. Continue arguing. And again, you could also say with that one, you can also say continue to argue. Both are good. Uh, Gaurav said they they mm, being rude, start verbal together. 
Gorov, uh, maybe you want to say, being rude, comma, they started a revolt or started to revolt against the ruling government. It's a tricky one there. Um, Clanira, I'll never stop traveling around the world if I can. Me too. Me too. Travel's good. Uh, started playing Gata. Started playing squash. Very nice. That works as well. Gertrude is reading aloud. You can practice your intonation and pronunciation. Um, I guess you can. Uh, the other thing that I used to do with my IELTS students is we would record our speech. So do a two-minute talk about anything you want. Record your speech. Listen to it and try to pick out which pronunciation uh, points. Or the other thing is you, you can take a two-minute speech of something, anything, maybe the TV, listen to that, and then try to copy, you know, so you, you have the text and you have the information. You listen to the TV, and then you have the text, and you read it yourself, and you try to copy the intonation and the pronunciation. And you record yourself, and after you listen to it, compare the two together and see how close was my pronunciation to the two-minute pronunciation that I had there, and that'll help you to check your intonation and your pronunciation at the same time. Okay, so I think that's that's everything I wanted to go with go through with you guys today. So you have this document, so you have all these things here. So that's your homework: is take a look and just see how many verbs in English require an ing after. And the other thing is these words, which were cool because they we can use them for sports, but we can also use them for other situations as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you got some usefulness out of that. Just to make sure we're, we're good to go, next week will be the same time. Uh, next week for me on Thursday will be 2.30 Vancouver time. And then I'll be back on Monday at 3.30 Vancouver time. And I believe Kareem is Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, if I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys got some use from that. Take some of those words. Practice using them. Try to use them, I don't know, maybe in a bit of writing, uh, some sentence writing, maybe co combine some of the vocab with some of the grammar that we learned today. Practice those things, and I promise you will slowly improve. The other thing is read books and be polite with everybody because being polite gets you respect, and it makes everyone happy, and that's what it's all about. So you guys have a great day. I'm going to go to sleep right now. I'm very tired. Uh, thank you for staying, staying awake with me. Thank you for staying awake until 2 a.m. I appreciate it. Much love from Vancouver. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.